Mr. Trump and Governor Pence's immigration policy plan. Uh, and so basically our plan, uh, which was drafted with great assistance from uh, Senator Jeff Sessions, which I'm sure is a name that uh, people here uh, very much uh, respect. He's a great United States Senator and he's very tough on immigration. Uh, very proud to have him as one of the most important advisors to the campaign. So we started out with three bedrock foundational components of why we need to reform our immigration system. Number one, a nation without borders is not a nation. Uh, it's, it's incumbent upon us, it's, it's necessary that we build a wall across the southern border of the United States. Uh, you know, across that wall, across that border comes methamphetamine, heroin, uh, those are the drugs that are killing a whole society of young people, a whole generation. Uh, healthcare to illegal immigrants, just healthcare alone last year, cost the United States of America $11 billion. And just recently, in, I think mean, it's July 2nd, in Marion County, an illegal alien who had been deported six times uh, killed a couple people. And uh, you know, I can assure you that uh, under Mr. Trump's plan and on his watch, that would not have happened. So how are we gonna achieve a plan that uh, basically focuses on three things. A nation without borders is not a nation. A nation without laws is not a nation. If we're not enforcing federal law at the borders, are we a nation? And a nation that does not serve its own citizens is not a nation. So, for example, we need to put American workers first. We need to put Americans first. It's important for us to look out for other countries throughout the world. But most importantly, we have to focus on Americans and American exceptionalism. And we're not anti-immigration. We're just anti-illegal entry into the United States of America. There's a way that it can be done. And if anything, we need to streamline and grease the wheels of immigration so that the good people that want to come here and work and earn a living can get to our system lawfully and uh, participate as a meaningful member of our society under the laws of the society which exist. Now, in addition to defending the laws that are already on the books, there's a couple things that we're going to do. Uh, first and foremost, ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, uh, they only have 5,000 officers right now. Now, for comparison purposes, the Los Angeles Police Department has 10,000 active police officers at any given time. But uh, ICE has 5,000 officers. Now, these ICE officers, they're not only dealing with issues that occur at the southern or northern border of this country, they're also dealing with issues within the 50 states, within Guam, within our other territories. And so it's quite ob obvious that they're, they're a little bit overstretched. And so Mr. Trump's plan is to triple the amount to 15,000 of the ICE officers that we'd have. The way we do that is uh, by accepting the recommendation of the Inspector General for Tax Administration and eliminate tax credit payments to illegal immigrants, or as Bill said, illegal aliens. Another thing, nationwide E-Verify. Uh, this is important. I mean, it's about time because we have Americans who are looking for work who aren't getting that work. And most of the people that are hurt the most are young people. Uh, they're, they're people from minority communities. They're the ones that have the highest unemployment numbers. And so if we can get E-Verify in place for all 50 states and our territories, we can make sure that law-abiding citizens are not shortchanged in the job search process. Another thing that we're going to focus on is the mandatory return of all criminal aliens. Okay. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous what we have in place right now. In place right now, people get let back out on the streets even though they're undocumented and they're not supposed to be here. They get back onto the streets and they go out and they commit another crime. Uh, under Trump's plan, that is not going to be the case. Uh, we, will, uh, we will not cash a release. We'll also put on the books 
uh, a law which makes it an additional crime to be in the United States illegally. Uh, and so that would be a, an additional crime that could be pegged onto somebody if they committed a crime here and they were, in fact, an illegal alien. We need to defund sanctuary cities. Let's, let's be honest. Sanctuary cities are running in complete opposition, oblivion, ignorance to federal law. These places are havens for, for undocumented illegal aliens, and the taxpayers bear the burden. Now, the politicians in Washington, D.C. want us just to let this happen and say, oh, sanctuary cities, if they want to defy federal law, fine, go ahead and do it. Um, that's not working, folks. I mean, is that working for you guys? It, I don't think it's a good thing. And so, Mr. Trump and Governor Pence intend to defund any sanctuary city that's aiding and abetting and trying to uh, conceal illegal aliens here in the country. Now, another thing would be enhancing the penalties for overstaying your visa here in the United States. Uh, many people come here on a visa and they intentionally overstay their time here. I mean, this is a national security issue. This is an issue of having undocumented individuals in our country. They may not be contributing to our social security programs, to our tax programs, et cetera, et cetera, but they may be taking from our tax programs through health care, through other social assistance programs. And so we need to enhance penalties, put more penalties in place, and also have a tracking system by which uh, you know, we make sure that when a visa expires, there's actually someone there to notify the individual that their visa has expired and it's time to leave. We need to cooperate with local gangs and task force. Uh, you know, local gang task force, they're the ones that are out on the streets, local law enforcement who are dealing with police officers, I mean, excuse me, with their fellow police officers, they're dealing with criminals, and not all criminals are illegal aliens, not like, just like, not all, all illegal aliens, besides being here unlawfully, are doing illegal things. But the bottom line is, is that a lot of this gang work, especially in places like Southern California, you have violent street gangs like MS-13 and the 18th Street Gang, and these groups are filled with undocumented uh, illegal aliens. And, and so we need to work in accordance with those local law enforcement task force that are already in place to make sure that uh, we're not allowing people who aren't supposed to be here to commit crime and to, uh, to harm our, our society. But most importantly, we have to put America first. And that's an immigration plan in and of itself. Uh, we, we have these trade deals, uh, NAFTA, normaliz normalizing trade relations with China, uh, and the Trans-Pacific Partnership. I'm just going to give you a rundown real quickly of, let's see, NAFTA has cost the United States of America to overseas jobs. 700,000 U.S. jobs in its entirety. Normalizing the relations with China has cost us 3.2 million American jobs. And uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, just in 2015 alone, without it being in its full, full uh, intended uh, position, that took, up, that took away 2 million American jobs. And so, you see, there's a problem here. You folks understand it. The, the vast, silent majority of Americans understand it. That's why your organization, although you were outspent by tens of thousands of dollars, you were able to mobilize the grassroots and you were able to defeat Measure 88. You folks in this room are the only people who have won a major statewide election in Oregon for our side in about 30 years. And so, if you don't mind, I hope you don't mind that Team Trump is going to hitch onto your bandwagon, and we're happy to have you guys on board with us. We think you're a terrific organization. We're going to campaign hard here in Oregon. 
We truly believe that Mr. Trump has a decent opportunity to win in Oregon. One of those reasons is because of what happened with Measure 88 and the fact that Mr. Trump has used that as one of his number one campaign issues. It's how he defeated 17 of some of the best Republican opponents we've seen in recent years. And that's what's going to propel him to the presidency. And that's what's going to cause him to win states like Oregon that traditionally go blue. And with Mr. Trump's success comes the success of Governor, excuse me, Dr. Soon to be Governor Bud Pierce. Uh, you know, we, we have to get him into office. That is imperative. We need ethics and we need integrity in the governor's office. Uh, beyond that, we have Dennis Richardson, as you are all aware. Uh, his signs are here and his magnets. I just picked up a magnet. Dennis Richardson running for Secretary of State, an uh, excellent individual, uh, the statesman of, of the utmost caliber. And then we also have to focus on our legislative races. We have to get good conservatives elected to the Oregon State Legislature because if we don't, they're going to continue railroading us. And at this point, because we've been losing for so long, they feel as if they have a mandate. Now, we've been frustrated for a while, and we've been angry, and we've thrown our tantrums, but now we've come to the point where we're organized. We know the stakes of this election. We know the stakes of the other elections here in Oregon. We've been frustrated, we've been angry, and now we're organized, and now we're going to win. So I appreciate y'all listening to Mr. Trump's plan for immigration here in the United States of America. I'm happy to take any questions, although I'm not a policy expert. Thank you, and may God continue to bless the greatest country the world's ever seen, the United States of America. Thank you.